This is Phoenix, and I'm going to talk a little bit about the Neoplatonist philosopher Plotinus. Plotinus was an interesting thinker that, while clearly inspired by Plato, intuited some remarkable insights and brought some interesting philosophical notions to the table. Some of his major ideas include the idea that we can apprehend truth via contemplation, and more specifically, that our reality is really a kind of divine contemplation, that the true spiritual life is completely disconnected from anything material. And so basically what you kind of take away from this notion of reaching the divine through contemplation is that the divine is contemplation and contemplation is divine and is the divine. And I think that is certainly an interesting concept. He also talks about how souls can essentially be ugly. They can also be beautiful. But what makes the soul beautiful or ugly is the amount of wisdom and the quality of the wisdom that it has or does not have. So we can bracket that last point for a little while because I want to talk a little bit about these ideas of contemplation and the divine and how Plotinus has this very almost spiritual way of looking at thought and reality and the like. It's certainly easy to see Plato's influence on Plotinus. Plato says that we can apprehend the forms via contemplation and for Plato, the forms are essentially the highest form of expression and the highest truth. It is essential and it is unchanging. While Plotinus seems to have a similar take by saying that we can apprehend truth via contemplation. Plotinus' own ideas of spirituality and thought are very similar to how Plato viewed the world. The two thinkers seem different, however, in that Plotinus was mostly concerned with the nature of thought and the action of thought, while Plato indeed concerned with the nature of thought and thinking, wisdom and reflection, was also concerned with action. And so this is definitely true when you think about Plato's Republic, which is basically this complex philosophical and political treatise and tract on, um, on normative action and what should be done. But Plotinus doesn't seem concerned about these issues of action or justice as much, um, if at all, um, I can't really think of anything specific with Plotinus talking about justice and, and action and the like. This is partly because he seems to think that thinking is itself action and the only action that a person needs to do. It is through thinking that we achieve our greatest potential as people and how we discover truth. In all honesty, I find tremendous comfort in this idea that thinking is the highest form of reality is reality. And of course I will explain why. As a thinker, I find myself constantly perplexed not by the intellectual and conceptual riddles of the universe, but by the nature of the world itself, speaking specifically about the physical world, which would include people, but also the way the world is structured, the way that it is constructed and the like. I find myself perplexed at how people behave. I find myself perplexed that a person can be a victim to violence or exploitation, either by people or by nature. I find myself perplexed that bad things happen to people with no explanation. I find myself perplexed by the subjective states of being of others that bring about certain behaviors that are essentially unintelligible, at the very least confusing and misleading. But this is why I like Plotinus. This is why I find value in Plotinus. Essentially, if you reduce everything to thought and contemplation, these riddles seem less and less important and less and less overwhelming. This is not because these issues that I have brought up, such as exploitation and abuse and violence, aren't real problems, but because we can look at them in a different light, in a light that is less overwhelming, and a light that is more hopeful and inspiring. Epictetus, the Stoic philosopher, who definitely took part in the idea of slave philosophy, had a similar thought when he said that we are the only thing we are in control of is our minds and how we think. Plotinus, though, has a more spiritual and less concrete version and formulation of this by insisting that all of reality comes down to contemplation. This is interesting in the line of Greek thinking, for instance, when you think about Aristotle's famous distinction between action and contemplation, the active life and the contemplative life. All things considered, if reality is simply thought, and contemplation is how we derive our safety and security in the world, consider me signed up. You might be wondering why this is such a comforting notion. Well, it's hard for me to explain, though one reason is completely apparent. Indeed, the physical, tangible world is not a safe place. It can indeed be a beautiful place with its sunsets and the great interaction with others, interactions with others, but it can also be cold and cruel and completely unpredictable. The world and what happens to us 
as existential physical entities is flat out scary. And not just because it's unpredictable, uh, but simply because it challenges our safety and security, it challenges our well-being, it challenges our spiritual life, it leaves us spiritually deprived, it leaves us hopeless and confused. And, and, and this would be the idea behind existentialism for sure. And the idea behind us as existential entities. I think this is why so many people have found for such a long time a release in making and consuming art. Indeed, if we look at thinking as an aesthetic process, a process of enjoyment and teleology, to of course use Aristotle's term, a kind of aesthetic contemplation, we can see why people retreat to the arts. They are throwing themselves in their work. They are throwing themselves in an aesthetic experience, becoming a part of complete abstraction or fantasy that is somehow separate from this world. I'm going to continue to talk about Plotinus in um, what I plan to be another video. So this is simply part one. But I think that I want to close by just saying that Plotinus is a powerful thinker because he evokes all of these ideas and because he kind of restores a faith and restores dignity in thought and contemplation. And I find the idea that we can achieve the divine and experience the divine through thought very rewarding and very, very powerful. And I think it's an idea that is often avoided and neglected in our empirical and scientific world and our spiritually deprived world, but I think it's certainly an idea worth considering. And I think that the philosophy of Plotinus is certainly worth thinking through and taking seriously. Again, this is Phoenix, and thank you.